you know, what I feel like we accomplished the most was becoming a team. You know, we're a closer, we're a closer team, and you're starting to see the camaraderie and the, and the guys are competing. Uh, but when it's time to cheer for each other, they're cheering for each other. Uh, when it's time to, to, uh, to strain, they're straining for each other, and they're spending more time together. Uh, and hopefully we can carry that forward throughout the course of the season. Camp is a little bit more structured, uh, but hopefully uh, as they get their, get their real lives back, as I told them uh, just now, uh, they'll still stay focused on the task at hand. And, and obviously, uh, playmakers make plays, but at the end of the day, teams win. You know, the, sec the second scrimmage, we did have some guys that, that were down that we were hoping were going to be able to make it, but you saw a lot of progress from, uh, from the young guys. Uh, you know, I thought, I thought the quarterbacks uh, battled, their, uh, battled their tails off and, and gave us everything that we needed to be able to make a decision. You know, and coming out of that second scrimmage after evaluating it, uh, you know, Tony Musket will be our starting quarterback. And, uh, but, uh, but Calandria, man, he battled all the way to the end, uh, really excited about uh, the development and the progress that he made. But uh, uh, Tony had a great week uh, last week and, and challenged him to, to show me some of the, 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 the true leadership things that I know that he has. He was a lot more vocal, took a lot more command of it. Um, and then play well in the, in the scrimmage. Um, you know, guys just continue to find ways to make a, make a couple plays here and there, especially when you're working with different guys from different groups, especially on that offensive line, man. It's been tough. But uh, what I learned uh, coming out of that is that, you know, Blake Steen's going to be a guy, you know, that can, that can, uh, that can help us. Uh, Uganda's probably a little bit more comfortable and better suited to play out at, at, uh, at tackle. Uh, so, so excited about that. And then some of the young guys on defense, uh, you know, Keandre continues to, continues to flash. Uh, for us at, uh, at corner. Uh, it was good to see some of those, those younger D linemen get in there, get in the mix, and, and play with uh, uh, some of the groups. And we mixed it up a little bit, too. You know, you do some ones on twos and twos on ones. And uh, because of the, uh, the guys, I uh, had a little bit of sickness go through uh, the locker room. You know, I heard somebody say that COVID uh, has taken down one of our, uh, our fellow media uh, personnel. Uh, so, it's, so what I learned is that, you know, we're going to have guys that understand what it means to be the next man up and be ready to go. Yeah, so, so Chico, I don't have a timeline, but uh, to see him out here uh, walking, so before, um, before the procedure, you know, and it was a, and it was a, it's a crazy thing. You know, there was some, some bone fragments uh, that, had, that had broken off at some point uh, throughout his, uh, th the course of his growth, uh, and they just got lodged in the perfect position to cause uh, swelling and impinge the knee. So he couldn't even bend his knee prior, in, uh, prior to the surgery, and now he's out here walking around with no crutches. Uh, so I know he's got 10 days where he can't do anything, and then it will all progress as, as his knee stops swelling and he can get himself ready to play. So I don't have a, a timeline in particular, but I know after 10 days I'll be able to tell you better because uh, we'll be able to turn him loose and see, uh, see where he's at. In his absence, how did, what did you see from Paul Chiray or even Ben Smiley? Yeah, you know, Ben Smiley, I've, I've been talking about Ben, and, I t and I've said this before and i say it again, man. Ben, you got to make me, you got to make my word good, man. Uh, I've been talking about you for uh, for two years, uh, uh, but what you see is 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 he's starting to with the additional reps, he's starting to play better with his hands, uh, play better with his eyes, be a little bit more disciplined, not get caught up on the uh, on the one on one battles, uh, and then Akiri has just just been steady. You know, he's a guy that uh, probably not going to flash as much as the other ones, but he's going to do his job. He's going to be where he's supposed to be and give you great depth and then also great leadership. And I think the additional reps helps him in the locker room from a leadership standpoint. Yeah, you know, so overall in terms of uh, the operation and the knowledge of knowing where to be and, and who to fit, and I feel really good about that. Uh, obviously, got to get the right pieces up front. Uh, so, so the uh, not ready with the with the first five yet. We're still trying to determine that as we get uh, we get Bowley back off of the ankle sprain and uh, get uh, get Noah healthy and then get Jimmy back in the mix. But it just so overall understanding, I feel good about it. And and I've, I'm a firm believer that you got to be balanced. You got to be able to run the ball. And what does that mean? That means that 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 you got to be efficient. And then whatever the situation calls for, you got to be able to produce for that situation running the football. So uh, I feel good structurally, uh, mechanically, procedurally. Now we just got to get the right pieces, uh, the right five uh, in place by the time we get to Tennessee. And is Ugana, is Ugana, uh, is he needs to be out of tackle? So, so right now, uh, depending upon you know how quickly Bowley is, is able to get himself back in shape, he would be a rat tackle kind of guy. Because, uh, because, uh, but he may have to go over. Like we played him at both, so we played him at, at left. We played uh, Blake uh, Steen at left. Uh, we've been trying a couple different combinations, which is, which is, you know, assuring to us because now we feel like we got a little bit better depth because those guys got a, got a lot of reps. But you know, if if Bowley is back ready to go, Bowley will be at left tackle, and then he would be over at right tackle. And your tight ends, you 
you've got some veterans. Yeah. Aren't you going to lean on them a little bit to help? Definitely. Them? First and foremost, uh, going to lead on uh, on Sackett and Mish for for leadership. You know, they came back. They didn't have to come back, and I believe one of the reasons they came back is because they want to experience, you know, winning some games. But they also want to contribute from a leadership standpoint. And and today out in practice, man, the tight ends uh, look really, really good catching the ball. So they're going to have to be, you know, effective in the passing game. Uh, and not just be, you know, a predictable uh, route runner and only able to do some things. They're going to have to run the full gamut of, of routes. And then in the run game, uh, they're that extra piece, you know, in the run game that gives you the ability to uh, to run some of your schemes. So definitely going to have to lean on those guys, starting with leadership, and then we're going to have to get some production starting in the run game. And then as they uh, as they continue to develop in the pass game, we'll get some production there. You guys opened with, with Tennessee. Yep. I know a few years ago, it's pretty public. You were involved with, with that yep. job. What do you remember about it? And, and kind of walk us through yeah, so, it was. man, man. First of all, uh, obviously Tennessee is, is in my opinion, one of the one of the blue bloods. You know, one of the the, the, the top tier programs in the country. Uh, when I evaluated, there were a lot of positive things uh, about it. It just wasn't the right time for me. So when it came down to it, uh, you know, I, I prayed about it and said, I want the, the, the Lord, you know, your spirit lead me in the direction that you'd have me to go. So so it was close. Uh, but but at the end of the day, when I looked at the totality of everything, it just wasn't the right time uh, and the right fit for me. And so I'm happy for, uh, for Hypo and uh, excited for him and, and what he's doing there. Uh, obviously, an extremely passionate fan base, uh, has all the resources uh, that you need to be a top tier program. So I'm excited about uh, our matchup, you know, when we play them to, to kind of see where we are as a program. Uh, I think you have to play games like this to get a barometer and to, to gauge, you know, where we're at. So 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 it either tells us, OK, we're, we're ahead of where we need to be or you know what? We still got uh, a good a significant amount of work uh, to do. Uh, but I'm excited about the opportunity to play these guys. Uh, but it was close. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't the right timing for me. Yep. So he should be he should be back pretty soon. Um, Dakota's a, a couple more weeks on his hamstring. Um, Jimmy's about about another week away from from getting back on the on the practice field. Um, Clary's about uh, about ready to get back into practice with his uh, with his high ankle. Um, I think those were the other ones are, are bumps and bruises uh, that that'll take you know day to day to to possibly a week or so to to get him back. Let's do one last question because they've got a dinner and we're going to get the other coaches over mm -hmm. here. So. You had said that this ball camp has gone smoother, gone faster, and now heading into regular season. I'm, what do you hope will kind of carry over? Yeah, so great question. So that was, was, was my number one talking point at the end of practice is the momentum you know, that we've, we've generated here uh, in fall camp. Can we continue to build upon that momentum as we get into you know, the season where now you have school, now you have other distractions? You got you got relationships, you know, family, personal coming into the mix. Whereas for the last you know 18, 19 days, we just had them captive, right? And and, and there's nothing but football. So can we build upon the momentum uh, so that when we get into to practice, we, we we know what the energy level needs to be, we know what the focus needs to be, you know, we know what the attention to detail. So can we block out all the noise and the outside distractions just like we did in camp? compartmentalize our lives, as I, as I like to tell them, simplify your life, keep it simple so that we can build upon the momentum that we created as a, as a team, um, both both in a locker room, on the field, but then also from a, from a knowledge standpoint. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you.